Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Spartan Stadium on the campus of Lima Senior High School. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert and our entire WSN crew, and we have a dandy of a matchup tonight in the Division VI State Semifinal. One of these schools is going to go on and play for a state championship, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs and the Marion Local Flyers. And, Darren, we take a look at the number one team in the state of Ohio, the Marion Local Flyers, putting up phenomenal numbers. Oh, phenomenal numbers. What would, what was we talking before, the, before we went on? 300 and... 94 to 20 in the first half, outscoring their opponents. You made a great point. How many p points have they given up in the last so many games? They've seven of the last eight games have been <laughs> shutouts, and they've given up three points in the last eight games. Uh, uh, that's that's unheard of. <laughs> Our pregame show is presented by Lima Chevy Cadillac, the area's premier Chevy and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We're proud to call this home. We take a look at the Grove Bulldogs. Fair numbers of their own right. Really a physical team. Everything relies around those great linebackers. They well, have. I'll tell you what, we're probably going to see probably six of the best linebackers in the area uh, by both ball clubs. You know, Grove having two uh, outstanding ones and you know coach Goodwin likes to play the three four and his four linebackers <laughs> it's too bad because all four of them can't make all conference <laughs> right. but they're, they're good enough to be all conference right. but uh, you got to give a lot of credit to Grove they went on a roll they took one on the chin against Allen East and that cost them a league championship but they went on a roll and last week they just flat out dominated um, Columbia Station Columbia pitching a shutout 34 to nothing Columbus Grove will kick off to uh, Marion Lobo. Back deep for the Flyers. Number five, Nathan Butcher. Number 34, that is Drew Louse. And number 25, Kyle Otte. So Grove comes in at 12 and two, six and one of the Northwest Conference. Their only loss was to Allen East, who Marion Local beat last week, 55 to nothing. Marion Local Clemens comes into this game, 14 and 0, eight and 0 in the MAC. Offensively, they average 41 points a game. And defensively, are you ready for this, Darren? They only give up 2.3 points a game. <laughs> Much better weather conditions tonight, oh, too, than last Saturday. Fantastic weather conditions. Uh, last week, we were at Van Wert Glenville, and it was a blizzard of sorts. So here's the opening kickoff. And they'll take down number 25, Kyle Otte, and he'll be thrown down right around the 25-yard line. That's where the Marion Local Flyers will start out. Marion Local come out led by number 10, 6'2", 165-pound quarterback. That is Tate Hess. He is 86 of 137 on the season. 16 touchdowns, four rushing touchdowns, and one interception for 1,260 yards. Loud notch Moody on the stop there for Columbus Grove on that kickoff return. Hess is in the gun. He is flanked off to the left. He's got one man in motion, two to the right. Hess is going to flip the ball back. He's going to go across the left side. Here he goes down the 40. He's at the 30, or the 45, taken down to about the 49-yard number Perfect 25. execution there by the Flyers. Nice kick-out block. Got him to turn in the corner, and it was his speed. Got by one defender and got pushed out of the boundary here at about the 48. That is Kyle Otte, number 25, the 5'8", 170-pound 170 junior. 923 yards and 15 touchdowns on the year. This is Hess in the gun, flanked by two at, on the left and the right. He's got two receivers to his right. He'll take the snap, hand the ball off to the left. He'll try to go around the left side, and a nice open field tackle, and he missed it. That was number three Barraza. for the Bulldogs, Barraza, who's really quick out there on the boundary. Ran out of bounds by number 62, <coughs> Kyle Lathrop. And that, but Barraza, like you said, slowed him up initially. Held him to one yard there on that little run. That'll bring up second and nine from the 49. And Darren, we talked a little bit about this earlier. The Columbus Grove is going to have to stop the run tonight to be successful oh, because Marion Logo doesn't throw the ball a lot. No. This is Hess in the gun. He's got one to his right. He's going to roll. He's looking to throw the ball. He rolls out. He's under pressure, waving to his receiver to leave the area, and he's going to be taken down out of bounds. And it looks like, did he get the he pass got, he off? Got, he got yeah. the pass off, but I think it fell incomplete. He was trying to get his wide receiver to break loose and go deep. Appeared to be Nathan Boucher. So the Columbus Grove Bulldogs playing some tight defense right now. You saw those Good linebackers, pressure. and they're shadowing Hess, and they've got Tad Koch running all over the place after him. And uh, he is quite the athlete. Oh, he's a man. <laughs> he's 6'3", 240-pound senior. He's got 132 tackles on the year and five for loss yep, there. Yep, and here hit you. So here comes Hess. He's flanked on the right side by number 34, Drew Louse. He's got two receivers to his right. He's got one in the slot. He takes the pass, looks across the field, 
He's under heavy pressure. He's chased out of the pocket. He's scrambling to the right, looking for that first down. And he's going to get, oh, he's going to be short of the first down. And there's a oh, flag on the I think play. got a clip. I think you're right. There's a flag on the play. And it's over by where Tate Hess went down. Let's wait to hear from the officials. And he is short of the first down unless the penalty is against Columbus Grove. We'll see what the call is. And they get a hold, and it's against the Marion local Flyers. So Was it that or legal, legal use of the hands? One of the two. But like you said, it's going to go against yeah, the Flyers. It's yeah. going to go against the Flyers. And the one thing, Darren, that really would help Columbus Grove tonight is getting Marion Local in third and long. As I said earlier, we talk about Tate Hess's numbers, and he doesn't throw the ball a lot. Now, he doesn't throw it a lot. He's only got one interception on the year, so he's very good with the ball. Well, having them in third and long, if you're Columbus Grove, that's the position. Like you said, you want to have him in the ball. I'll tell you what, that young man under center, he can run with it, gang. My yes, goodness. Yes, he can. So we're third and 15 from the 43. Hess is in the gun. He's got Kyle Otte to his right. He'll take the snap. He'll look across the field. He's under pressure. He steps up in the pocket, and he is going to be oh, taken down him. by number 62 Painful. for the Bulldogs. Kyle Lathrop takes him down, and that's going to force a Marion local punt. And this is exactly the start the Bulldogs wanted. Yeah, appeared to be Kylan Mazin all on the stop. Mm -hmm. Dylan Bryan on the stop. Landon Schrader. So here's Marion Local in punt formation back deep for the Bulldogs. Number nine, Mitchell Ellabrock. Number two, Aiden Eifert will punt the ball away for the Flyers. So a great first stance for the Columbus Grove defense. Nice and a punt. fantastic punt. Are you kidding me? It rolls at about the 15, about the 14 yard line. Darren, what a fantastic punt. That young man, that's a weapon. <laughs> yeah, coming in, he was averaging just under 37 yards a kick. He's got to have a fresh leg because you know how many times he's punted this year? <laughs> Not very many. 15. <laughs> Our scoreboard is provided by Home and Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist. Members of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs will start on offense. They are led by quarterback number four, Brenton Renner. The six foot, 165 pound senior is 89 of 163. Seven touchdowns with eight interceptions. So he's had a little trouble uh, turning the ball over this year, Darren, but he's got a fantastic running back duo in Trenton Barraza and A.J. Schaefer. We'll talk about them in just a second. So here's Renner in the gun. He's got one to his left. He's got two receivers to the left, one to the right. Renner will take the hike. He'll pass it to Barraza and goes up oh, the middle. And he's he is met. just met in the hole and a devastating tackle right there. If I get a number on that young man, let's see if we can identify number 14, 14 for Marion Local. That is Landon Arling. Yeah, he stepped Five. right up. 5'11", 165 pounds. Squared Jared. him up, <laughs> didn't yes, he? he did. That was a form tackle, was it not, mm. Darren? Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Spartan Stadium with a trip to the state title on the line. Here's Renner in the gun. He's got Barraza off to his left. He's got two to the left, one on the slot, and one to the right. He's looking over for instructions from his coach. Second and seven from the 18-yard line. This is Renner. He's looking. He's going to look to crow, go across the middle. He heaves it to the left side. He's out there, and he's got a reception made. A little and short, but nice look. reception. Reception made by number eight for the Bulldogs, Lawson Mag, with a nice catch, but uh, unfortunately just a little bit short. They'll make it about third and one from the 18, so a manageable third down. Ryan Holman on the stop for the Flyers. Darren, look at the number of, of student athletes marrying local. They've got 81 numbers out there, and not, not every number's full, but th that is a huge Division VI football. Oh, team. absolutely. <laughs> every boy in the school. Just wonder what Coach Gutenmiller and Coach Hemwally's doing for basketball practice because you got to feel a majority of them out here on the football field. And they hand the ball to A.J. Schaefer, and it appears that he is going to be just maybe short there, fourth trying, and a few inches. Trying and to see who's coming up from the bottom of the pile appears to be number 36. You take a look at A.J. Schaefer, comes in at 6'1", 235 pounds. He's a senior, 87 carries for 435 yards and 14 touchdowns, and they're going to keep their offense Big on the play field. there this by is, Partington. Uh, they changed their mind there, and they're going to punt the ball away. And I, and I got to, you know, you don't want to give Marion Local any momentum, so a great play. As I was saying with A.J. Schaefer, he is the big back. They bring him in in short package situations, and unfortunately he was met head on by that. Oh my Marion goodness, local they, had, line. they had a horse back there last year, a thoroughbred and Colin Metzger, and to go from Metzger to these two, they didn't lose a whole lot, did they? No, they did not. If anything, they gained some depth. You take a look at Trent and Barraza on the season, 214 carries for 1,567 yards and 13 touchdowns. A.J. Schaefer comes in at 87 carries, 435 yards and 14 touchdowns. 
here to Aiden Eifert. Come off with an equipment adjustment there for the Flyers. Back deep is Nathan Busher for the Flyers. The punt is up and goes across midfield. And that's where a fair catch will be called at the 49-yard line. That's where the Marion local Flyers will take over. So both teams kind of feeling each other out here. The defenses are winning the battle in the trenches right now. So let's see if that continues. You got to like the way this is going for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Didn't move the ball offensively, but defensively really did a nice job. Oh, yeah. he They, they definitely, you know, kept Marion Lowe from sustaining a drive right there. If anything, they pushed him back. Big penalty on that block in the back. Absolutely. They bring up first and 10 from the 49-yard line. 7.45 to go here. This is Hess in the shotgun. He's going to flip the ball to number 25. He's going to roll around the right side, pick up about five yards, and a nice little run by number 25, Kyle Otte. Sure was. Here to be met and brought down by number 13. And the talk in the press box before the game was Darren Meyer, who was hurt last week. Darren, if he's going to play tonight, Darren Meyer, the lead back. Well, he's the second leading back, 806 yards, but he's got 23 touchdowns on the year. 23 touchdowns, yeah. plays on both sides of the ball, too, I believe. He really knows how to find the end zone. Yeah, he's one of their linebackers. Yes, he is, and a fantastic player. I think we got an equipment injury or and equipment they're adjustment gonna, yeah, there for Grove. Trenton Barraza has to go off the field. He also plays corner for the Dogs. Coming in to replace him is number 13, Antonio Gray, who is really good in coverage. Here's Hess in the gun. He's got one to the right, one to the left, and two receivers to his left. He's going to keep the ball himself. He's going to roll to the right side. He's going to go across the first down marker, and he's going to get to about the 34-yard line. And that is a Dale's Concrete first down. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential I'll tell you, he needs. got a heck of a block, Danny, from Drew Laus right there to spring him to get to that first down marker. And he is really quick, Darren. He gets around. And it's oh. really a nice ball fake. I thought the ball was in the tailback's hands. And he kept it himself. And just a great job. So here's Hess again. He's under center. He's got two to the back. He's in the power eye formation. He's going to swing the ball back. This is Audie, number 25. He's in pursuit by number 50, Tad Koch, and he takes him down. And a nice job by the Columbus Grove linebackers to get in coverage and make the tackle. Yeah, it appeared to be Cook on the stop along with number 57, Loudon Ochmoody. Loudon Ochmoody, the 5'8", 180-pound junior. So here we go, second and eight from the 33-yard line. 6.26 to go here from Spartan Stadium, all knotted up at zeros. And here's Hess again with the I formation. He's got three receivers to the right. He's going to hand it up to the first man through. He's here's going to go for Parkington. about four yards. That's number 36, and you are correct, Aaron. My 36 is not on my sheet. Do Simon you Partington. have that? Simon Partington. Simon Partington. Thank you, Simon Partington. A little help in the back there. We'll have to make that adjustment on our, on our sheet, Darren. I think Lathrop was on the stop there for Grove. So here comes Marion Local. Is there in the gun? Or now we've got a stoppage of play here. And it looks like another, another equipment, equipment issue. And my goodness, this is the third person they've taken off the field for an equipment issue. Number 20 for the Victor Hosher, the 6'1 sophomore, is taken off the field. So here's Hess. He's under center. They're in the power eye. He's got a receiver to the left and a receiver to the right. Number 25, Kyle Otte in the tailback position. He's under heavy pressure. Screen oh, pass to Otte. Screen. Otte's out front, and he's going to take him down. And Very a great well job by number 62 for the Bulldogs, Kyle Lathrop. The 5'11", 180-pound junior sniffed that out from the sure beginning. Sure did. Stayed at home. Didn't over-anticipate. Read to play. Brought him down for a loss. And a fantastic job by Kyle Lathrop, and that's going to bring up another punting situation for the Flyers. I think they're going to go for it, Barton. Fourth and ten, you're right, from the 35, and they've got the offense on the that's field. That's how confident you know, Coach wow. Goodwin has Absolutely. in his defensive staff. Here's Audie in the back. He's got Drew Laus on his right. He's got two receivers to the right. Fourth and ten from the 33. This is Audie. Looks across the field, looking to roll to his left, under heavy pressure. Tries to get to the sideline, he's taken out of bounds by Tad Koch. I'm sorry, that's Tate Hess. I referred to him as Adi. I apologize for that. Tate it was Hess, Hess yeah. yeah. Tate You're Hess. right. Cook, Mr. Cook run him out of bounds, didn't he? Yes, he did. Imagine so, seeing 235, 240 pounds coming at you. And not a bad read, Darren. It, it, the ball's at the 31, so it's not like you're giving it up at midfield. Sure. So I, I like the call by Coach Goodwin, and uh, who are we to argue with uh, maybe the best coach in the state of Ohio? Yeah. <laughs> 
Longest winning streak, right? Absolutely. Currently. Tonight's instant replay is made possible by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. So here's Renner in the gun. He's got Barraza off to his left. He's got two receivers to the left and one to the right. He's got a man in the slot formation. He takes the snap, hands to Barraza off the left side. There goes Trenton Barraza, and he gets about five yards and a nice run by Barraza and a big hole by that Columbus Grove offensive line. We take a look at that Columbus Grove offensive line, and it is a really, really good one. Tad Koch at the left tackle. Kyle Lathrop at the left guard. Kylan Mays at your center position. Loudon Ock Mooney and Ethan Johnson. And we're talking 305, 230, 245 on the corner. So good size nice, there absolutely. for six, huh? Absolutely. So here is Brenton Renner in the gun. Boucher and Eifert on the stop. Last play for the Flyers. Second and three from the 38. Renner takes the snap. He's going to hand the ball to Trenton Barraza, and he's taken down immediately. And a nice job by the Marion local defensive line, number 28. That's Drew Seitz, the 6'2", 225-pound senior, just knifed his way through that offensive line. Yeah, that was a heck of a play, wasn't it? Goodness gracious. 3.56 to go, 0-0. Zero zero. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert Ethan from Heitkamp Spartan Ethan also Stadium. stepping up in there. And did, a did a nice job, hole. didn't he? Absolutely. Took on that running back. Now they've got Barraza in the wildcat formation, Darren, at third and three. He's got a man off to the left. That's A.J. Schaefer. He's got two to the left, one to the right. Barraza takes the direct snap. He's going to run off tackle, and he is He's not going to make it. He's going to be short by about a yard and a half. So decision time for Coach Schaefer and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. This would be a little bit riskier on that side of the field, would you not say, Darren? Oh, no question. Mason Rose on the stop along with... Appeared to be number 14, Landon Arling. And so they're going to go with their punt team. And number five is Nathan Busher back deep for the Flyers. They'll send out Brenton Renner to punt the ball away here. Three minutes and counting. Renner takes the snap, gets the ball up, and a nice punt by Renner. Going to bounce, and it's going to oh, take a nice bounce. Columbus Grove bounce, and it's going to roll across Out to, to the, the 20. 20 yard line. So a great job by Brenton Renner to get the dogs and flip the field. And Marion Local's gonna have to drive 80 yards if they want the first touchdown of the game. 2.43 to go here, 0-0. Zero, zero. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Spartan Stadium on the campus of Lima Senior High School. A trip to the state championship, Darren, on the line here. So Marion Local, no stranger to state titles. Uh, we all know the story of them, but Columbus Grove, uh, unfamiliar territory, wanting wanting to get that crown. It's a game of field position, no Absolutely. question. Right now here it in is, the first yeah. quarter. This is Hess in the gun. He's flanked on the right side by a tailback. He's going to hand the ball up to the first man through. This is number, let's see, I believe that's number 25, Kyle Otte, and he has taken down in a great job of penetration by the Columbus Grove defense. A.J. Schaefer on the stop. Flew to the football. Like I said, those two linebackers that Grove possesses, along with the ones at Marion Local, you're not going to find a no. better set of linebackers playing in the same game. Landon Schrader, six foot, 175 pounds senior. He's got 93 tackles and seven tackles for a loss. So this is Hess in the gun. He's got one behind him. He's got two receivers. He's got a man in motion. This is Hess. He's going to look downfield. Little wheel route. Little wheel route. He's coming down the left side. And he's got his man out there, and he just overthrows him. His intended target was number 25, Kyle Audi. And, Darren, you saw it just like I did from our vantage point. We saw him coming out of the backfield, goes down the left side. A really nice design play, but really well covered and by the Bulldogs. that young man can run, and he's got a – or has had a severe – knee injury because he's wearing a pretty heavy duty brace on that left knee and he can still get it when he runs upfield. So a big third and nine from the 21 yard line for the Bulldog defense as Marion Local comes out. Yeah, I was, the Bulldog defense right now, they're holding their own. This is Tate Hess in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's going to give it to him. This is number 25. This is Kyle Otte. He gets around the left side, and he's going to have a Dales concrete first down. Well, so I third think that nine. was Shep Hawker that brought him down, but that was a great job pulling right there to the offensive line, getting their kick out blocks, allowing Audi to get up ahead of steam, getting those shoulders square to the line of scrimmage and getting that first down. Darren, how frustrating is it for Columbus Ooh. Grove as well as they played defensively this quarter to give up a third nine like mm. that? Yeah. 
Well, this is Hess. He's under center. They're in the I formation. He's got Darren Meyer directly behind him. He's going to give it to Meyer right off the right side, and he'll pick up maybe a yard. It'll bring up second and nine. So Darren Meyer is in the game right Tough now. Tough young man, yes, isn't he? he is. We heard he'd been battling some upper body injuries. Yeah, he's going to come out of the game, but uh, that tough young man carries for about a yard and a half. We'll see how much he plays tonight. Uh, folks in the booth here were saying that he uh, he was hurt pretty bad. Got nicked up, yeah. yeah. Got nicked up pretty bad. So We but, call it severe injury. Yeah, right, that young right. man calls it nicked up. Right, you're absolutely right. So Drew Louse is you're the back. You're not going to keep him out of the game, <laughs> no. Danny. No Drew Louse is the back on the right side behind Hess. He's got two receivers to his right. And Hess is going to take the snap. He's going to hand to Drew Louse. He's going to go off the left side, and it almost nice broke the tackle. Nice tackle right there. Trenton Barraza comes in and lays the sure wood did. there. 6-1 sophomore. Nice job by Barraza coming up and filling the gap. So, you know, you get to this level of competition, Darren, and nobody in those starting units are afraid to hit. Nobody. No. <laughs> you know, sometimes you'll see a kid that's better in run coverage, maybe, or pass coverage than run coverage. Nobody on these on these two teams is well, afraid to hit. I'll tell you what, you. their composure's been really good on both sides of the ball right now, except for what, we've had one flag. Big third and six here for the Flyers. Hess is in the gun. He's going to flip the ball back to number 25, and he's going to be taken oh, down. Oh, there's Tad Mr. Koch Koch. Yep. made an unbelievable play from his linebacker position, comes across the field and throws Kyle Adi out of bounds, and that's going to bring up another fourth down by the Marion local Flyers. My goodness. And Darren, right now, those linebackers are really playing well mm -hmm. for the Bulldogs. Yeah, we saw Van Wert's linebackers were really good. We've seen some good linebackers in this tournament run. And that's going to bring the first quarter to the end. After one quarter from Spartan Stadium, we're all knotted up at zero. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium. The Marion Local Flyers, Columbus Grove Bulldogs are not at a zero. Marion Local is in punt formation. Trenton Barraza is back deep for the Bulldogs and another nice high punt by the Flyers. And Barraza is going to field it. Oh, he is going to be taken down goodness. immediately. And you talk about a stick. What a hit by the Marion Local Flyers. And that is number, if we can get a number read right on that. I didn't see it. Yeah, number 46 for the Flyers. Number 46 is Ethan Heitkamp, and an unbelievable hit. You want to talk about Laid some form tackling? Him, yes. Oh, my goodness. We're seeing some great hits tonight. Our premier sponsor for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. Good all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs. Call OPAC. OPAC is our premier sponsor. So here's Brenton Renner in the gun. He's got Trenton Barraza off to his left. He's got two receivers to the right. Knotted up at zero with 11.52 to go until halftime. They got a man in motion. Renner's going to swing the ball back to Barraza. Barraza tries to get out to the left side. And he's going to pick up maybe a yard if that. But just, it's unbelievable, Darren, the way that these two defenses fly to the ball. Mm. They're just so aggressive, but they are so fundamentally sound, and they stay in their lanes and play within themselves. Trying to see who what that was that brought them down. That appeared to be Partington. Here's Renner in the gun. He's got A.J. Schaefer in the slot position. He's got Trenton Barraza directly behind him and two receivers to his right. Second and nine from the 26. You got a man in motion. Renner going to take the, going to hand the ball to Barraza and a nice run right up the middle. And he picks up a big nine yard chunk and that's real close, close to the first down. Yep, sure he is. is lightning quick, Darren. Might be about a half a yard short. And Trenton Barraza, and we talked about it earlier, Darren, on the season. 1,567 yards and 13 touchdowns. Quick. He is so quick, and they got off the ball really quick that time. It, like, and the Marion local defense is no stranger to getting to off the ball this. quick. That's right. right. Absolutely. So here comes Renner. He's got Barraza directly behind him. Third and one from the 34. They're trying to pick up the first down here. Renner's going to take the ball, hand the ball to Barraza, and he is going to be awful close, Darren. Let's Second see where they effort mark it. Second might yeah. have got him the first down. He's going to be awful close. Yeah, I think it looks like he may have got it, depending see on where they spot the ball. Is. That's He's... going to be real close. Marion Local's not uh, disagreeing with the spot. Let's see what they're calling it. Yeah, they're going to say it's a first down. So that is a Dale's Concrete first down called Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all yard, your. Wasn't it? Yes, it was Oof. for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. So first and ten from the 35, 10 24 to go from Spartan Stadium. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert, bringing you Division Six State Semifinal action. 
And the Columbus Grove Bulldogs trying to pull off the upset of the year. Here's Renner in the gun. He's got Barraza directly behind him. A.J. Schaefer is in front up to the left, and he's going to follow the block of A.J. Schaefer, and why not? <laughs> A.J. Schaefer is one of those guys that you, you get behind you. him. He will road grade right in front of you. So number seven, A.J. Schaefer, 6'1", 225 pounds, and he can really lay the wood. Mason Rose on the stop. Nine forty-six to go, second and seven from the 38. Renner's in the gun. He's got two receivers to his right. He's got A.J. Schaefer in the slot and a lone receiver on the left side. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to roll to the right. He throws across the field. He's got his man out there for a first down across midfield, almost up to the 49. Hawker. Number Shep 20 Hawker. is Shep Hawker, and a great job by Shep Hawker. He is their leading receiver on the year, Darren. We've talked about him quite a bit in post or past games, and he is a dynamic receiver, and if they get him involved with Trenton Braza, they are a lethal combination. Carter Jones on the stop. That brings up a Dales concrete first down. So here come the Bulldogs, first and 10 from the 49-yard line as they're trying to move the ball into scoring position. This is Hawker in motion. They're going to give the ball to Shep Hawker. He goes up the middle. He's going to pick up a nice gain of about five yards. So Shep Hawker on back-to-back -back plays, picks up a first down, and then goes for another five yards. Mason Rose with great effort there. On the stop for Marion Local. It's going to bring up second and six from the 47 with 8.50 to go. And here comes Columbus Grove using this fast tempo. Got A.J. Schaefer in the slot position. Two receivers to the left, a single receiver to the right. And Barraza is in the backfield off to the left. Renner looks out. He's going to, oh, he tries oh, to throw the ball. Big play right there. Tries to throw the ball to, to Barraza in number 28. That is Drew Seitz. He comes out of nowhere, knocks the ball down in a fantastic play by that young man. Yeah, I don't think he realized actually the ball was pertinent near right up above his head. Heck of a play there. Like you said, got his hands up. It's quick off the edge. Darren, there is an absolute huge crowd here tonight. There are just thousands of people here. You look at both, and these stands, there's a lot of seating here mm -hmm. behind the senior. Yeah, there's and there, a lot of folks. And, and there's a lot of folks here for this game. Everybody in the state's wanting to see this one. So here comes Renner. He's got Barraza to the left. He's got three to the right, two, three to the left, one to the right. Renner's going to roll off to the left, looking downfield. He's going to throw the ball, and he's got his man out there in his completion. It's Shep Hawker, and that's another Dale's concrete first down. So Shep Hawker is the man of the drive right now, Darren. They're using him in motion. They're handing him the ball, and they're throwing the ball to Pretty him. pitch and catch right there. He knew exactly where the first down marker was. And Ran a great route, nice nice toss. So here come the Bulldogs, first and 10 from the 39. They're on the drive here. Runners in the gun. He's got Trenton Barraza off to his right. And it'd be interesting, Darren, to watch A.J. Schaefer in the slot position on the right side. Let's see if they don't follow his block again off the boundary. There's Hawker in motion. They're going to give it to Barraza and go off the left side. Yeah. Little Mr. You're right. They line Schaefer up on the right side. Everybody in the building thinking they're going to run off him. And they go back to the left side. Arling and Rose on the stop for Marion Local. That'll bring up second and eight from the 37 with 8.24 to go. Renner's doing a nice job of leading this team down the field. He's, he's, he's under composure. He's not forcing the ball in there and doing a really fantastic job. Brenton Renner, 6'1", 165-pound quarterback. He's got Barraza to the left. He's got A.J. Schaefer in the slot position. They're going to give the ball to Barraza right up the middle. And a nice job by Barraza to pick up about three yards, and he is slammed to the turf by oh, number yeah. 77, yeah. That's Mason Mr. Rose. Rose. He's he been big his first uh, half. <laughs> he does a nice job. We He's both got him a handful of tackles right now. Nice job by that young man as he can really plug up the middle. Well, he's light on his feet. I mean, he he's, is. He's, you know, plays with a low level of gravity and just uh, exceptionally strong and does a good job with penetration. Third and five. They've got Barraza in the wildcat position, and there's a flag that comes down. And they're going to call a sideline warning against Marion Locum. A sideline warning. And uh, let's say <laughs> Coach Jacob Sherrick down there looks like uh, they're talking to him. Is that is that Coach Sherrick down there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's him or not. It looked like him down there. Maybe it's not. There's no player up near. The no, there was. I don't understand that. There, there, none of the kids are close to the. Uh, I don't know. 
Oh, well, we're in the booth. They're down there. So here comes Barraza in the Wildcat. He's got A.J. Schaefer to his left. He's got two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right, third and five. Barraza takes a direct snap, gives it to Schaefer. He's going to go up the middle, and he's really running hard. And he's going to be close to a first down, but he's going to come up about two yards short. So that's going to bring. Arling Rose on the stop. Had to bring up fourth and three from Jake the 34-yard line. And I think Groves takes is going to go all, for it down. Takes all three to bring that young man down. They Especially are. when he gets ahead of steam up. Look who they put in the backfield. Yep, they've got A.J. Schaefer behind Trenton Barraza. They've got Barraza in the wildcat position. Fourth and three from the 32. So a huge gamble here for the Bulldogs. If they can make it happen as they try to get into the end zone with 6.56 to go, Barraza keeps the ball. He fumbles it, and everything goes up. A foul for the Bulldogs. As it looked like Barraza and Schaefer collided before the play. Barraza drops the ball, and that'll turn the ball over to Marion Logan. Yeah, I don't even know if it was a clean snap either. It was just all downhill from, from the snap on. And, and, and I just wonder, Darren, and, and look, I'm not questioning the, the coaching, but you were moving the ball so well with, with Renner in the gun, and you had Barraza and Schaefer back there, and then they you know changed it up a little bit. But Well... You gotta give a team like Marion Local different looks. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So here comes Local, and they've got Tate Hess under center in the power eye, no receivers. They've got man in motion, that's Kyle Otte. They're gonna hand the ball off, and off to the left side. And here he goes oh, around the left goodness. side. He's over to the 40 Big yard line. Big stop there by a Hawker. Number 28, Drew Seitz with the carry, and a nice pickup for the Flyers, and that's what they do, Darren. They just grind on you until you bend a little bit, and they run right by you. Yeah, Hawk will come out of nowhere because if he don't get him, he's going to get another 20, 25 yards. That's a Dale's Concrete first down. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. So here's Hess as he's under center. He's got Drew Seitz in the tailback position, number 36. Audie. Oh, a nice job by number 14 for the Bulldogs. That's Landon Schrader as he comes up and makes a big-time play on number 25, Kyle Audie. Hodge Moody also in on the stop. 6.07 to go, second 11 from the 42. Five fifty-eight to play. Here comes Tate Hess as he's in the gun. He's got 36 off to the left side of him. They're going to hand the ball to 34. That's Drew Laus. Oh, and they're going to stop we have the a play. Motion? Yeah, yep. we've got an illegal procedure on the Marion local offensive line, it would appear to be. False start. You're right. Good eye. Look, appear to be a left tackle. False start for Marion Left local. guard, maybe. That'll push the ball back. A little quick. But, the, you know, if you're Grove, this is where you want to put the Flyers in second and third long situations. Second and 16 from the 47. You're exactly right, Darren. They don't throw the ball that well. Their strength and their beef is running the ball with that offensive line. So here's Hess in the gun. He looks to throw. He's going to go across the middle, and he's got a man. It's and a Busher. nice pitch and catch. Number five, Nathan Busher, and you want to talk about hitting him in stride. He gets him right in the middle of that zone. He spun it pretty well, didn't he? Yes, Got it right he down did. the gut, the seam of the defense. Right as I say, they don't throw the ball well. You look at that pitch and catch, and they look like they've been doing that a long time, Gilly. That'll put the ball first down. That's a Dale's concrete first down. So here's Hess in the gun. He's got Drew Seitz off to his right. He's got a man in motion. They're going to give the Seitz off the left side. Here goes Seitz. He's taken down immediately. It'll be about That's a Barraza. gain of about a yard, a yard and a half. And you're right, Trenton Barraza comes up and just really hit him low and knocks him down. That'll bring up second and about nine from the 25-yard line. 4.49 to go. Equipment issue again. Boy, we've seen a lot of that the first half. Yes, we have. And this first half has just flown by, Darren. That one there was a helmet coming off, so state rule says you got to come out for a minimum of one play. So here come the Flyers. They're in the power eye. This is Hess as he's running a little bit of a 
RPO, and he gets to the outside, and he takes it up to about the 15, right around the first down, and they're going to say it is a Dales Concrete first down. So you saw Tate Hess run a little option football there, Darren Kitson himself, and picks up a first down. And the Marion Local Flyers are in the Knee Camp Farm Market Red Zone. The Red Zone is presented by Knee Camp Farm Market, your one-stop shop since 1998 on State Route 127, eight miles south of Salina. I was going to say, it looked like Cornelius Green right there. That's probably before your time. <laughs> no, Cornelius Green was, I, my, when I was a kid, it was my first Rod jersey. I, yep, that was my first jersey I ever had was a Corny Green jersey. Here's the handoff. Oh, and, oh nice my boy. goodness. Number seven, A.J. Schaefer out of his linebacker position, knocks him down to about the 19-yard line, and then I'll be about a three-yard loss. He hit him. He wasn't going any further. I'm nice sore. play by that young man. I'm sore up here from all this hitting, Darren. There is some vicious well, it's hitting. A, it's been a great first half <laughs> of football. It has. It has been an absolute fantastic first half of football. So here we go, second and 12 from the 16-yard line, still not at a zero, 331 to go from Spartan Stadium, Division VI State Semifinal. This is Hess. He's in the gun. He's got one to the left. He's got a man in motion. They're going to flip it back. Tries to get around the corner. He's going to be hit hard Oof. by A.J. Schaefer in Oof. a gain of about three yards. My goodness. Both linebackers, Cook and Schaefer, cleaning the action up. Got him in third and eight. So here we go, third and eight from the 12-yard line. Columbus Grove trying to hold the Marion Local lethal offense back. As I said earlier, Marion Local averages 41 points a game, and it is tied up at zero here right before halftime. So here come the Flyers. Tate Hess is in the gun, and they're going to take a timeout. They're going to take a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Back here at Spartan Stadium in Gilly, we need to clear something up. Number 36 is Simon Partington, and we apologize to that young man. I have not called his name tonight. We didn't have him on the, on the sheet, but the good folks behind us here from Marion Local have helped us out. Had him and listed so, as yes, 62, him, I yes, believe. Yes, right. Had him listed as 62, so Simon Partington. Yeah, he's has played a lot this. of football he for has, him. And he's done a great job. Uh -huh. <laughs> so here we go. Third and eight from the 12-yard line. Marion Local trying to get on the board first. This is Hess in the gun. Two down territory, you got to believe. I, I think you're absolutely right. There's Drew Laus. They'll fake the handoff. They'll go off to the left side. Here he goes into to the five, to the four, into the end zone. Touchdown, Marion Local. Kyle Otte from 10 yards out and a nice misdirection play. The Flyers strike first, and they go up 6 nothing. Yeah, he got into a mismatch there with Tad Cook, and it became a foot race to the end zone, and Mr. Cook just wasn't quick enough to catch up right there. So that'll put the Flyers up 6-0 on the Home and Insurance scoreboard. Our scoreboard is provided by Home and Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, members of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. False start. False start. Appear to be on the right side. That'll push the Flyers back. A lot of sponsors tonight, Darren. I'm trying to get them all in here. A lot of good business support. That's Oh, my goodness. We have such great business mm. support here at WSN. Northwest Ohio is every sport. There's businesses out there that want to support their communities and their kids. So here's the point after attempt. Oh, the offensive lineman moved. I saw that. The, the center kind of raised up a little bit, and they got him on that one. That's going to push it back a little farther. And so Carson Bills, the place kicker for Marion Local, is going to have to go back just a little bit farther. Yeah, he's coming in with 68 extra points and two field goals. Daniel Everman, number eight, is the placeholder. So that will push it back to the 14-yard line. Places, kick is up, and it is good. So with 2.39 to go in the second quarter, the Marion Local Flyers strike first, and they lead the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 7-0 right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium with 2.39 to go. The Marion Local Flyers 
have struck first, and they lead the Columbus Grove Bulldogs seven and nothing. And a nice drive by the Flyers, and a little misdirection there for that touchdown, Gilly. Yeah, but but you hit the nail on the head. They sustained the drive. They took some time off the clock. You know, one of the interesting things, you know, Mr. Shine sent both coaches some keys to the game, and yes, one of the things Andy Schaefer was talking about was on defense. He wants to prove you're one of your one of the best defensive teams in the state. And right now in this first half, he's well, his he's, ball yeah, club absolutely. has shown that. And offensively, he wants to sustain some, some, get some drives that are sustained, stay ahead of the chains, and win the trenches because he feels like he's bigger up front. May not be as quick, but uh, they've held their own here in this first half. Here's Trenton Barraza as he receives the kick as he goes across the 20, and that's where he'll be taken down. So a great job by the special teams of Marion Local as they take down Trenton Barraza at about the 21-yard line. That's where the Bulldogs will take over with 2.34 to go. Trying to see who was in Drew Seitz appeared to be. Tonight's instant replay is made possible by Hucker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at HuckerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. You know, Coach Good won a couple keys he put down here, be able to control the line of scrimmage against a very good defense front seven. And he hit the nail on the head. He has a lot of respect for Columbus Grove and that front seven that they possess. Be sound and disciplined on defense and improve the kicking coverage. And so far, both, both coaches have hit the nail on the head and it's been a very good first half. And there's a nice run by Barraza as he goes right up the middle. And they're going to stay with that run. And I love the philosophy of Coach Schaefer. He's going to push the ball up the field with that big offensive line. Four and five yards, Bob. And there's Trenton Barraza gets him another five-yard gain. So they're four yards, second and six from the 26. This is Barraza in motion as he's going to get the pitch back. And he's going to go across the 29-yard line to about the 30 will bring up third and about four. So the, you got to keep it manageable in third down against this Marion local defense. And I think Columbus Grove's done a really nice job. Well, out. he tried to cut that one back against the green because Marion local does such a great job of rotating to the ball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And just filling and closing and gang tackling. He tried to cut that back up, but he was met. A lot of yellow hats. Third and five for the 28 runners in the gun. He's got A.J. Schaefer back behind him. Yeah, there's, a, there's, there's the flag. Yep, they're going to call that. Renner goes off of the ball. Oh, they're going to call an offside. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, there was an encroachment. Yeah. There was two or three of them that moved all at the same time. Yeah, that's going to give the Grove Bulldogs an automatic first down. So a mistake by the Marion local Flyers will advance the ball up the field to the 33-yard line. That's where the Bulldogs will start out with 130 to go, first and 10 from the 33-yard line. Yeah, let's see if he decides to put the ball into his quarterback and let him try to throw the football and advance it. This is Renner in the gun. He's got Barraza off to the left side. They're going to pitch the ball back to Barraza. He's looking to throw down the field. Barraza throws it down the field, and it's almost picked off. And great coverage by number three, Carter Jones. His intended target was number six, and that's Zach Reynolds as they go down the field and do a little trickeration there. Yeah, really good job by Marion Local being disciplined. They were rolling Busher over the top for help. Look how close to the line they play their safeties there and not going to give up that run and knowing that Renner doesn't have the strongest arm. He's accurate. You. Yeah, you're right. And there's Barraza again. Is he nice job running up the middle as he picks up four yards. So Trenton Barraza continues to eat that yardage up, but the clock is moving. The Flyers continue to lead seven to nothing. We are under one minute. He Neifert with a stop. So here come the Bulldogs as they try to push the ball down the field. Third and seven from the 37 yard line. Renner gives the ball to Barraza as he picks up about four yards and that's gonna be short of a first down. And Marion Local is going to take a timeout. Well, there's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout on the booth. You're watching High School Sports right here, WSN. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium with 35 seconds to go until halftime. The Marion Local Flyers lead the Columbus Grove Bulldogs seven to nothing. And it looks like Brenton Renner's gonna go back into pump formation. The Flyers will send back number five, Nathan Busher, and number 25, Kyle Otte, two dangerous return men. 
with 35 seconds. So here's Renner with the punt. It's a nice low liner. It's be fielded by number 25 as he goes up to about the 45. And that was Kyle Otte taken down by Tad Coke. My goodness, Coke plays everywhere. Mm, Special teams yeah. linebacker. Mm -hmm. Tackle. <laughs> Tackle, you're right. Bus so, driver. <laughs> here we go with 27 seconds to go. And let's see what the Flyers do if they try to push the ball up the field or if they're content with that 7-0 lead. So a great first half for both these clubs. It's turned into a defensive juggernaut here as the Grove Bulldogs are trying to keep Marion Local out of the end zone here with 27 seconds to go. Tate Hess is under center. He's got two backs to him. He swings the ball back to number 25, Kyle Otte, as he goes to the left side, tries to get around the boundary, and he's taken down and taken down in a big way. And there's a flag, flag on the play. On play. Yeah. Usually that means holding in that area. Let's see what they call here. Schaefer and Hawker yeah, on the they stop. Gotta, they're Barraza. Gonna, they're going to get Marion Local for a hold, and that'll push the ball back 10 yards. And you got to believe they'll just take a knee here, Darren, with 17 seconds to go. And they're going to push the game clock back to 19 seconds. I'm not quite sure who he said on the PA on who it was, but still goes down as a big, big loss there for the Flyers. Like you said, I think they're going to be content with 19 again, seconds to go. You, yeah, I was going to say, then again. We don't have his playbook. <laughs> You're right. You're so right. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Spartan Stadium here for the Division VI state semifinal matchup between these two high-powered offenses and great defenses. This is Hess. He's going to hand the ball right up the middle, and that should do it for the first half. We'll see if they don't uh, call a timeout, but that clock's going to go down under 10 seconds. Schaefer on the stop for... Yep, and that'll Rose. do it. After one half from Spartan Stadium here on the campus of Lyman Senior High School, the Marion Local Flyers lead the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 7-0. We come back. We'll have action in the second half. We'll also have our halftime adjustments. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back for the second half from Spartan Stadium between the Columbus Grove Bulldogs and the Marion Local Flyers. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert and our entire WSN crew. And Gilly, let's take a look at our halftime adjustments presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevy and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. For Columbus Grove, Darren, played a fantastic first half, just didn't finish the drives when they needed to. Well, they're eventually going to have to put the ball in the air a little more than they I agree, you know, yeah. You know, because... The White Marion local plays defensively. They play that eight in the box, and they just do a good job, you know, staying in their lanes and keeping the, you know, keeping the, not letting anybody outside and containing the football back into where everybody is. But they they play a phenomenal first half. Their defense is as good as you know what Coach Goodwin said. Their front seven's probably as good as what he's sure. seen, you know, this year. And uh, you know, if you're Marion local, you're in, you're up seven to nothing, and uh, your defense has carried you, like you said, three points in what last seven or eight yes, games. Yeah. You know their their philosophy is going to be very easy. We've got seven points on the board. Now you got to find some way to cross that end line. Yeah, and for Marion Local, you look at what they did offensively. I don't. Th I think Darren, they were a little surprised at the physicality of the Columbus Grove Bulldogs because they are being matched hit for hit. Yeah, the the, the big play was the, the the pass, the laser that that was yes, thrown. Yes. And, that was a big third down conversion. I think that went to uh, Busher, and yes, then they ended yes, up punching yeah. it in. But uh, great high school football games. You know, if you came here to watch high scoring, you're in the wrong <laughs> stadium. <laughs> That's right. And uh, it's it's going to be a dandy here in the second half. So local will kick off. Trenton Barraza back deep for the Bulldogs, and he will get the kick at the five-yard line. Falls down, and he is going to be down. And, Darren, that is oh, that's a huge. shame. That is huge because he slips on the turf. As the night gets going, it gets a it's little colder get, out here. It's going to get a little dew is going to form. Yeah, and, and that, that turf is getting a little slippery. And Trenton Barraza goes down on a knee, did not mean to. His left leg went backwards, and he goes down. So... A hole to start out with for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Yeah, that's one of those where he should have, you know, could have laid the ball down on the ground, you know, and not touched it and yeah, regain his balance. But that's just an unfortunate break there for. 
the Bulldogs. So the Bulldogs will start out first and 10 from the five yard line. Brenton Renner is in the gun. He's got Trenton Barraza. They are standing in the, in the end zone. So they are in a hole big time right now. Renner takes the snap, hands to Barraza, goes right off the left side and gets out to about the seven yard line, a pickup of maybe two, possibly three. That'll bring up second and seven from the eight yard line. Going to stay with that run. And hoping Here that Barraza to be Arling can... on the stop. Excuse me. No, you're fine. Barraza, with hoping that he can pop one real quick with his speed. Well, when you're back on your five-yard line, you got to find some way to get it out of there. And he's got enough confidence in that big offensive line to just run between the tackles. Here's Renner. He pitches back to Barraza. Tries to go to the left side. Tries to get around the boundary, and he does a nice job and picks up a big chunk of yardage there for about. Let's see if he's got a first down. I know he's close into the marker. If he's not, he's very close. He's real close. <laughs> Let's see what they say. They're going to say it's half third, yard. about a half a yard. i got to believe that. Uh, Busher ran him out of bounds at the boundary. Now, if this is me, I just sneak the ball because it, it doesn't look maybe, maybe an inch or a, in a less. That you go right over your big right tackle and Schaefer. Well, they're going to stay with Brent and Renner in the gun. Barraza is off to his left. There's A.J. Schaefer. Off to the right, to the left him. side. They're gonna, you're right, they're going to shift him. He's probably going to be the lead blocker. See if they follow his block. Well, high snap. Oh, oh somebody shot goodness. the gap. Yeah. It wasn't. Somebody was unblocked. That's going to bring up fourth and inches. Interesting to see what they're going to do here. But the snap was pretty high, and that threw the whole play off. And they are going to stay on the field, Darren. They're going to go for oh, it my goodness. from the 14-yard line. An unbelievable decision here. Let's see if he tries to draw him. you got to believe he may try to draw him off sides. Renner's in the gun. He's got Barraza off to his left side. He's going to take the snap. He's going to give it to Barraza. Barraza is hit, and he did not get it. I do He's not close. believe he got it. He's close. They're going to have to measure this one, Darren. This is going to be a big-time measurement here. Let's see what they say. The Grove Bulldogs are saying they got it. They be did. Connor Bruns. They got the first. An incredible One gamble. didn't get it by much. <laughs> An unbelievable gamble, Darren, on that play from the 14-yard line. But it pays off for the Bulldogs. First and 10 from the 15. 10.33 to go. Grove down 7 to nothing to the Marion local Flyers. Let's see how much confidence they can gain from that first down. Here's Renner in the gun. He's going to give it to Barraza. Barraza goes off the left side. He gets out to the left side. Here goes Barraza off the 25 to the 30. He gets oh, around the corner, the corner to the turned. 40, to the 50. Foot he's race. crossed half court out to the 40 and goes out of bounds around the 45-yard line. An unbelievable run by Trenton Barraza. They've been trying to get him out around the boundary all night, Darren, and he cracked one there. Yeah, what a nice angle by number six for that touchdown saving tackle there for the Flyers by Ryan Holman, sophomore. Because if not, it was going to be a touchdown. So Trenton Barraza scampers for almost 50 yards off the right side. And yeah, he followed it. Schaefer. He Schaefer did. opened up just enough of a seam to get him to slither through. Well, I like what you said, Darren. The confidence they built from that fourth down play was huge. There goes Shep Hawker in motion. They're going to go Barraza again. He goes off the left side. Here goes Trenton Barraza. He picks up a nice five-yard gain, and he is churning out the yards now behind that big offensive line. Yeah, somebody had him in the backfield, and he happened to That's escape good. that. All right, first down sponsor tonight is Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipseek for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Our scoreboard tonight is presided by Homan's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. Here's Renner in the gun. He's got A.J. Schaefer off to his right. He's got two receivers to the left, two to the right. Second and five from the 40, 35. This is Schaefer. He's going to be taken down. Hit immediately by number 30 for the Flyers. That is Nick Ranley, the 6'2", 175-pound senior. Nick Ranley shoots the gap and makes a nice tackle. Big Jake Top also, the senior, stepping up and making the play there. That'll bring up third and four from the 33. This is a big third down here. you got to believe if they don't make it, they're going to go for it. They go for I, it on the 14-yard line. I agree. They're going to bring Barraza into the Wildcat formation. They've got A.J. Schaefer in the slot. You wonder if he's going to follow that lead again. Here's Barraza, and he is. He's going to follow to the left. He gets a block outside, tries to break the boundary. He's being pursued, and he's big going to be taken play. down. A big play by the Marion local Tate defense. Hess. 
Tate Hess seals the outside oh. and does a great job of holding containment. Closed it off, fit, you know, fought off that stiff arm by Barraza. Just wouldn't let him turn the corner. So fourth and four from the 33, 844 to go. Flyers lead seven to nothing over the Bulldogs. And another big fourth down play. This is Renner in the gun. He's got Barraza off to his right. A.J. Schaefer's in the slot. Two to the left, one to the right. Renner takes the snap. He looks across the field. He steps up, throws to the middle. He's got a man oh, out there and misses him. Shep Hawker him. just missed him, and that'll turn the ball over on downs to the Marion local flyers. Yeah, he was open. So he had Shep Hawker running a route across the middle. He just throws outside of his outstretched arms, and that'll give the ball back to the flyers. Yeah, he ran a drag route with A.J. Schaefer, and he got double team coming across the middle of the field, and – well, if it does anything, Darren, it did flip the field as they started this drive on the mm -hmm. five-yard line. So a great job of the Grove offense, but they did not come up with any points. So they've got to play good defense here because this offense from Marion Local will Can run it right at quick. you. Yes, sir. This is Tate Hess in the gun. He's got 24. Darren Meyer beside him. They're going to give to Meyer. He goes off the right side. There goes Darren Meyer off the hole. He's going to pick up a big first down. Goes almost to midfield. Darren Meyer, number 24. The 5'10", 195-pound speed, speedster gets uh, Dale's concrete first down. Didn't look like he was hurt there, did he? No, he did <laughs> No, he did not. He shot out of a cannon there, did he not? So both teams go into the locker room and come out and say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to establish yep. the run. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a slobber knocker here in the second 17 half. 17 to go. Flyers lead 7-0. This is Kyle Adi in motion. Hess is going to hand to Meyer. Meyer goes off the right side and taken down, hit immediately by big number 50, Tad Mr. Cook. Yep. Mr. Cook in the middle. Yeah, I watched that young man last year as a junior and against Allen East. And, oh, just a real good athlete. And you can tell the improvement he's made. And, well, the improvement this football team for Grove has made this year is, mm -hmm. is really, really something fun to both these teams. Well, they, just took their better, knock, yeah. they took their knock against Allen yes, East. Yes, exactly. Since that time, you know, that loss has motivated them to get where they're at today. So this is Hess running a little option football. He goes across midfield to the 40, and those long legs of Tate Hess as he gets another Dale Concrete first down, and Marion Local is on the drive again. Great execution there by the Flyers. Offensive line, you got to give them a lot of credit opening up the holes, not only tonight, but for the last 14 games. And right there, Mr. Hawker run him out of bounds there at the boundary nearest us at the 35 yard line. Got to put the ball first and 10 from the 35. Marion Local on the drive again. They've got Tate Hess under center, Darren Meyer right behind him. They go to Meyer as he gets tripped up and hit immediately by big number 52 for the Bulldogs. Kylan Mays, the six foot, 230 pound off their defensive lineman, the sophomore, does a nice job of breaking through the interior of that offensive line. Marion Local switches it up too, Darren. They'll run from the gun and they also do the power eye. Yeah, they, you know, that quarterback they've got, you know, 86 and 137, 63%, 16 touchdowns and one interception, not bad. Second nine from the 34, 6.54 to go. Danny Herbert, Darren Gilbert from Spartan Stadium on the campus of Lima Senior High School. Hess is in the gun. He's got Meyer to the left. They're going to go to Darren Meyer off the right side. He's going to pick up another, Ooh. close to another big first down. He almost broke it for a Yeah, I think Cocker <laughs> saved the touchdown right there. And Darren Meyer squirts through the hole, and he almost got a big-time run there. And he is short of a first down, bring up third and three. So a big third down stance here for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. you got to believe two-down territory for the Flyers. I wonder if he had a conversation with Coach at halftime, <laughs> saying, I want to play, Coach. <laughs> he is, I'm a senior. I want to play. He looks pretty good right now. So here we go, third and three from the 27. Groves up on the ball. They've got their linebackers playing really close to the line of scrimmage. There go Darren Meyer again. He's going to be short, Darren. Trying to he see is that be made, short. made first contact. Cook, it appeared, number 57 also in there. Yeah. Arch Moody. Oh, boy. Here we Fourth go. Down. No, they're gonna no gave them a first down. Gave oh, them a they first did down. Give they, them a first yes, down. they did. Okay. They just gave the signal. They changed it to a first down. Absolutely. I because the, I heard the Marion local crowd applaud and they, they did signal first down. That's a good job by the chain gang over there waiting for the Yes, because they had we've they seen had, other yeah. situations where they get antsy and take off. First and ten from the twenty-five. 
You got Kyle Audi in the tailback position. This is Hess keeps a little it sneak. A little sneak. Gets a gain of about four yards. And boy, he's such a big kid that the, anytime they sneak the ball up the middle, they're going to get three or four yards. Well, pick your poison. Tate Hess, eight and a half yards of carry. I mean, good grief. So it's bend but don't break right now for the Kyle Bulldogs. Kyle Audi, 9.2 yards yeah. of carry. They'll come at you from every direction. Here's Hess. He's got Simon Partington in the fullback position. He's got Darren Meyer back in the tailback position. They're going to flip the ball back to number 25 as he goes around the left side, goes back into the middle, and that's Kyle Audi. And he continues Churning to churn well. yardage. Close to another Dale Concrete first down. They are in the Knee Camp Farm Market red zone. The Love red zone. that new rule where the lineman can just help push, push the old pile, get another three or four <laughs> yards. Right. The red zone is presented by Knee Camp Farm Market, your one-stop shop since 1998 on State Route 127, eight miles south of Salina. Knee Camp Farm Market is our red zone sponsor. Oh, I forgot. Mr. Meyer, 5.3 <laughs> a carry. He's quite the back, is he not? So Simon Partington is directly behind Hess and Darren Meyer directly behind him in the power eye. They've got no receivers out. They've got a man in motion. They'll go to Darren Meyer off the right side and a nice, nice job. Nice play by Cook. Cook comes in and just submarines the lineman and takes him down at his feet. Yeah, Landon Schrader also in there for the Bulldogs. That'll bring up second and nine from the 14-yard line. 424 to go. The clock continues to run. Not going to have a lot of clock stoppage in a game like this where neither team really throws the ball a no, lot. It's been a quick third quarter, hasn't it? Sure has. So we're at second nine from the 13 yard line. 411 on the clock. Hess is in the gun. He's going to give it, keep it himself, throw the ball out to the side. This is Meyer out to the right side. He's going to take it into the end zone. Wow. Two, very two touchdown. great blocks. They're not going. They're not going to get any credit for the points, but by golly, yeah. they opened up two huge blocks, and that would happen to be number twenty, Victor Hoshler. And I apologize if I said your name wrong, young man, but that was a great block you just threw there, along with Connor Bruns. I know I had Connor Bruns last year, and he he was dinged up early in the year last year. I didn't get a chance to have him, you know, this year, but I know last year he was on the sidelines and was banged up. That's good to see him back in there, but what a great block. Touchdowns are presented by Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. That kick's no good. So the no, the extra point is no good. With 4.01 to play in the third quarter, the Marion Local Flyers extend their lead 13 to nothing over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium with 401 to go. The Marion Local Flyers have extended their lead to 13 and nothing. And Kyle Audi catches a little swing pass out there. And they did it with all kinds of offensive movement there, Darren. They run the ball, they screen pass, they sneak the ball, they go on fourth down. A great job by the Marion Local offensive line. You do you think they tuned it up a little bit right there <laughs> after turned it up a little bit after, you know, Grove broke the big run right there and got yeah. all the way down there and then Marion Local held them on downs and then marched it right down the field and did what they had to do and got it across that end line. So dangerous territory here for now for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs as they are down two scores. The missed extra point may come back to Haunt Marion. Look, we'll see how that affects everything, but uh, Columbus Grove's got to score first, obviously. Yeah, this is, this is a possession. You know, you hate saying it, but with four minutes to go in the third quarter, you've got to get some form of a – uh, points here on this yeah. possession. So here's Barraza, catches the ball at the 15, goes across the 20, gets out to the left side, tries to get across the numbers to about the 25-yard line. That's where Columbus Grove will take shot. You said it earlier, Darren, that you felt like a halftime adjustment that Columbus Grove had to come out and exert the pass a little more, which they did a little bit in the first possession, but do you think they got to do it more now? Yep. Yeah, when you spotted them two touchdowns, you know, you're going to have to open up the playbook. Sure. yeah. Our scoreboard is provided by Home and Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, members of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. So here's Renner in the gun. He's got Trenton Barraza off to his left, A.J. Schaefer in the slot position, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Renner hands the ball to Barraza. He goes off the left side, picks up maybe a yard, maybe half a yard, but he's met there by the Marion local defensive line and number eight, Daniel Everman. 
I think it was Everman. I think it was Partington. Eifert. The premier sponsor for the Maryland Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. Good all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs. Call OPAC. Here's Renner in the gun. Barraza off to his left. Renner's going to look to th throw the ball down the middle of the field, and he overshoots his receiver intended for number seven, A.J. Schaefer, just outside of the outstretched arms of Schaefer. Yeah, tough break because that was a first down. He was right there at the sticks for a first down, just a little bit high. And Renner's getting time in the pass protection. He's just shooting a little long on his receivers tonight. Yeah, the edges are starting to play a part for Marion yeah, Local defensively. Right. Bring up third and eight from the 33. You sneak those defensive backs and those linebackers up there. Here's Renner in the gun. He's going to keep it himself. He rolls to the right side. He throws down the field. He's got his man out there and a nice pitch and catch. Number five, Zach Reynolds. And that, or I'm sorry, Zane Steckscholdy is the intended target, and he makes a nice catch, and that'll bring up a Dale's concrete first down. So you called it earlier, Darren. The pass is playing in effects right now. Well done. Well done by the offensive line and the chip blocking right there, allowing him to get his feet set, making that nice pitch and catch for a first down. 2.54 to go. Marion Local continues to lead 13 to nothing. Renner in the gun. He's got A.J. Schaefer off to his left side. Barraza's in motion. They're going to give the ball to Barraza as he follows Schaefer off the left side. There goes Barraza turning the ball up. Pick up about two yards. Bring up second and eight from the about the 48-yard line. Arling on the stop. Jake Top also in on the play. Big number 55, Lincoln Stackler out there. Excuse me, 56. That's Jake Top. You're correct, Darren. We're way off the field here tonight. We're yeah. up pretty high. <laughs> Second and eight from the 48. Renner's in the gun. Barraza off to his left side. Renner's going to throw to the left side, and that's going to be an incompletion. Just throws it just a little short. His intended target was number six, and that's Zach Reynolds, and almost bounced it to him. Yeah, good pressure from Jake Top coming from that right side. Got his hands high. Took away the vision. Yeah, and it looked like Renner threw off his back foot there a little bit. Didn't step into it real well. That'll bring up third and eight from the 48-yard line. Yeah, we're up as high as we were at Tiffin, partner. Yes, we are. Other than we're not seeing the little white stuff say, not near floating the, and not, then yeah, the great, wind blowing at 40 miles an hour. Great weather tonight. Absolutely great weather. So here's Renner rolls to his right. Looks downfield. He's got a man out there. He's got A.J. Schaefer, and they're going to knock the yeah, ball down. Yeah, they laid the wood to him, didn't yes, they? Yes, sir. A.J. Schaefer took a big hit, and that's going to bring up a fourth and eight from the 48. So they're going to have to punt the ball, and the momentum right now is all on the side of the Flyers. So a huge set of possessions for the Grove Bulldogs. They move the ball to midfield, but they get stalled quickly, and they'll turn the ball back over to Marion Local, punting the ball down to the Flyers. 158 to go. Back deep for the Flyers is number five. That's Nathan Busher. Not a very good kick as it rolls to the 30. It'll go to about the 26-yard lines, and that's where it'll be taken down. That's where the Flyers will take over possession. So 146 to go from Spartan Stadium. And dangerous time right now for the Dogs as the Marion Local Flyers look to go up three scores. So one of these teams, Darren, is going to play for a state championship next weekend, and one of them is going to end a terrific season. Marion Local Flyers, the number one team in the state of Ohio in Division Six, And it would appear if they win this game tonight, they're on a collision course with Kirtland, who they've seen before in the yeah, state finals. I think finals. it was like 30 to nothing, wasn't yeah, it at halftime? Yeah. Yes, Kirtland They just announced big. New Bremen 22 to 21. Over LCC so right yes, now. Yeah, still wow. going on, but yeah, they fought their game. way back into the game. This is Hess as he's got his, oh. Oh, tough break Nathan there. Nathan Busher catches the ball, and if he catches that, he had a lot of green in front of him, but he drops the ball. So Nathan Busher runs before he catches it. And that'll go second and 10 from the 26. 
Yeah, they just announced on the PA. 27 nothing. 27 nothing. Kirtland over Fort Fry. That this is the winner of this game will play the winner of that game, which sounds like it's going to be Kirtland. There's Tate Hess in the gun. He's got Meyer to his right. He's going to go with Kyle Otte. Kyle Otte goes off tackle. Good job there by Tad Cook turning that back inside for his teammates to make the stop. Gain of about two yards. That'll bring up third and 10 from the 26. Third and seven from the 26. Yes, yeah, Schaefer's uh, coming up a little lame right there. Not quite sure if that was an ankle or a knee, but he's uh, he's going to try to play through it. But yeah, you can tell he's favoring an injury around the lower leg. So here's Hess in the gun. He's got number 24, Darren Meyer, off to his left, and Columbus Grove is going to take a timeout. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school football. WSN. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium with 104 left in the third quarter. The Marion Local Flyers continue to lead this game 13 to nothing over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. So we've got a third and seven from the 29 yard line. So a big defensive effort right here for the Grove Bulldogs as they need to get that ball back and score as quick as they can down two scores. This is Tate Hess in the gun. He's got number 24 beside him, Darren Meyer. He's got Kyle Adi in motion. He's going to keep it himself. He looks to throw down the field. Oh, he he's throws got deep him. down the left side. And he's got a man out there, and he's got the connection. Lance Number five, Busher. Nathan Busher's going to take it in for a Marion Flyers touchdown. Yep, Marion he got, local. He got behind Hawker. Hawker did what he could do to try to chase him down. He just couldn't. He couldn't match up with the speed of Busher once he broke contain there. Nice pitch and catch and a touchdown there for the Flyers. Touchdowns are presented by Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap guard. So Tate Hess with a bullet. He throws to Naslin Busher and an absolute strike down the left side of the field, and he gives the Flyers the 19-0 lead. That was quick there. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was an answer. That was yeah. something the coaches talked about during that timeout that Grove took. So here's the hike, the snap, the hold, the kick. Everything is good on the extra point. With 53 seconds to go, the Marion Local Flyers up 20 to nothing on the Columbus Road Bulldogs. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium. 53 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Marion Local Flyers have struck again, and they lead 20 to nothing over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. And Darren, Nathan Busher got behind the defensive back, and Shep Hawker was trying to catch up. He just didn't have the speed to contain no. the young man. Yeah, once once that was broken, it was a foot race, and Busher showed mm -hmm. his speed, and once he caught it, it was a foot race to the pylons. And I had said that it looked like Marion Local was going into the halftime. It was, third, it was yeah. what, third and eight? Third and eight. And I, I really believe that they'd try something off tackle or just keep a conservative back that far. And, boy, they had me fooled. Well, and I think Grove had no choice to take the timeout right there. I mean, A.J. Schaefer was really struggling to move. So here's the kick. This is Barazzi. He hits the 10-yard line. He goes across the 20. Uh, to the 22, and that's where he'll be taken down by a host of Marion local flyers. Just like Adi to start with. So 45 seconds to go, and you got to believe that Columbus Grove is going to have to put the ball in the air. Harling also in on the stop. That's good to see Schaefer back in the game because he was really hobbling. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 22-yard line. Flyers ahead 20 to nothing. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Spartan Stadium here on the campus of Lima Senior High School with a trip to the state championship on the line for both these squads. Brent Renner is in the gun. He's got Barraza to his right. A.J. Schaefer is in the slot position, two to the left, one to the right. He drops the ball. They give it to Barraza. He gets outside. He gets to the 30. He tries to get around the corner, and he's going to get a Dales concrete first down, a pickup of about 14 yards. Pushed out of bounds there by Busher. Jones. So a big pickup by Barraza. He's going to be a load for the next two years. Yes, he is. He is a fantastic back. 
Columbus Grove is still going to be, uh, regardless of winner and losing tonight, they've got a great program. And uh, just like Marion Local, they'll be a force in the next few years. So another stoppage of play here. Let's see what the official is going to say. We have the right tackles back, the right guards back. They're resetting the clock. It looks like Gilly going to put 36 seconds on the clock. So the clock continues to run after Barraza went out of bounds. So a break for the Bulldogs. Huh. Kylan Mays under center. Sophomore. This is Renner. He's going to throw the ball down. He's got a man in the middle. He throws it down. And he's got a connection with. Uh, oh, no. They're going to say it's incomplete. It wow. It looked like he had his man, Zane Stecksholdy, who was guarded by two flyers. Yeah, Busher and Jones back on coverage. Nice so, throwing ball, though. It was. And it looked like he had it for a second as he went to the ground. Our instant replay tonight is made possible by Hucker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at HuckerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. So here we go, second and 10 from the 37 with 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Renner's in the gun. He's going to take the snap. He looks to throw the ball down the field. He's going to, he's under heavy pressure, and he throws it out, and he does not connect with Chef Hawker as the ball falls short as he tries to go to the right side and make a connection there, and it doesn't happen. That'll bring up third and 10 from the 37. Yeah, Seitz and Ranley both putting an excessive amount of pressure on Grove quarterback right there. And it's almost, Darren, as if on cue, the Marion Local Flyers defensive linemen are amping the pressure up, and it's like they got a second win here because they are just ferocious in their and they pass they go defense. by so quietly, they don't do. they? Yes, they do. They're just so fundamentally sound. They don't, if you're going to beat them, you're going to have to earn the victory, you know, because they're not going to beat themselves. So here's Renner. He throws the ball down the left side, and he does not connect with number six his intended target, Zach Reynolds. That'll bring up fourth and 10 for the 37, and only about 20 seconds has went off the clock. Yeah, and I think Coach Schaefer's in a position now, 20 to nothing. I'm just curious to see what he's going to do. And he looks like he's going to bring on the punt team. You know, do, do you fake it here, or I well, mean, you're getting into that position. Sure, 12, sure. A little over 12 minutes to go in the contest. Well, you got to believe at 20 to nothing when Marion Local gets the ball back here and there's the punt that they're not going to put the ball in the air. you, you got to believe they're just going to ground mm -hmm. it down. The ball goes out of bounds at about the 40. Let's see where they mark it at. The 49-yard well, we just, we just, uh, line. Yeah. yeah, we just saw <laughs> a timeout by Grove and then that touchdown pass, so. Marion Local saw something to their liking and took a shot and converted. I bring up first and 10 from the, they're calling it the 50 yard line, so right at midfield. Tate Hess has done a fantastic job, Darren, of guiding this offense tonight. Pinpoint passing and uh, just great leadership skills out of that young man. This is Hess in the gun. He's going to hand the ball to number 28 off the right side. This is Drew Seitz. Wow, so he's pick what up a powerful <laughs> run. <laughs> going to pick up about five yards, and that will bring the third quarter to the end. So after three quarters from Spartan Stadium, the Marion Local Flyers are one quarter away from playing in the state championship as they lead the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 20 to nothing right here on WOSN. The premier sponsor for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. Good for all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs. Call OPAC. So start of the fourth quarter, Gilly, and the Flyers lead 20 to nothing. you got to believe they're just going to ground and pound here and keep that clock moving. I do what you do best, you know, and that's... Yeah, that's right. You're right. Get the ball to your playmakers to get you six, seven yards a pop while taking time off the clock. So here's Hess under center. He's going to swing the ball back to Darren Meyer. Excuse me, number 25, nice Kyle play. Otte. And he is taken down by a yes, host sir. of Bulldogs. So a great job of keeping Kyle Otte off the, off the Cook side. Cook on the yeah. stop. It's Dylan a Bryan on the stop. We have not mentioned this. Darren. This is a beautiful facility here at Lima City. Yes, it is. Great turf and a nice press box. And we've been treated great tonight. And 
and uh, great food and atmosphere and just a fantastic environment for a high school football game. 11.28 to go, third and five from the 45. Hess is in the gun. He's got Darren Meyer to his left, Kyle Audie in motion. They're going to keep it. They'll swing it out. And did that hit the ground? It looked like it did, but it, it appears that he caught the ball. And boy, he it was a shoestring catch. Made a heck of a catch, it didn't did. he? Kyle Audie catches the ball, and that's going to bring up fourth down. That's going to bring the punt team out for Marion Local. So a nice job by the Columbus Grove defense. So Trenton Barraza is back deep, Darren. You you gotta believe that he's he's a he's a chance every time he gets it to break one loose with his speed and his ability. And they need one bad right now. So here's the punt. Well, and that was one of the concerns that Marion Local he wanted, Coach Goodwin was concerned was that he wanted to improve on the kick coverage. And it is down, Darren, and at that's the three pretty good improvement. yard line down at the three yard line. So a fantastic job by the Marion local special teams, which has been fantastic all night. Their kick game, their punt game, and their recovery team has done a great job all night. So that's where the Columbus Grove Bulldogs will take over first and 10 from the four yard line. Ten thirty-three to go. Flyers lead 20 to nothing. Danny Hork, Darren Gilbert from Spartan Stadium and the home of Lima Senior for the trip to the state title on the line. Do what you do best, and that's what Marion Local's doing. They're putting it on the shoulders of their defense to see if they can't maintain that shutout. This is Renner as he keeps it himself. Tried to follow the block of A.J. Schaefer. Schaefer goes up the middle, a gain of about, about a yard. Gonna bring up, now they're calling it officially a two-yard gain. Second and eight from the six-yard line. Clock continues to run. Yeah, Partington blew that play up with Schaefer. Second and eight from the six, 10.07 to go. Renner's in the gun. He's flanked behind him by A.J. Schaefer. Renner's going to give it to Schaefer as he goes up the middle, and he'll get maybe a yard as he's hit by big number 33 for the Flyers, and that is Connor Brun, 6'3", 225-pound interior lineman. Partington on the stop, Arling in there. Like you said, Bruns. It'll bring him third and six from the eight-yard line. Clock continues to run, 9.23 to go. Brenton Renner's in the gun. He's got A.J. Schaefer off to his left. He's got three receivers to the right. He's looking, he's under heavy pressure, and he's going to go down. He's going to be sacked. Partington. And a big sack by Runs. the Flyers as they throw him into the end zone, but that will be spotted at about the four-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. And Sights. The Grove Bulldogs are going to have to punt this one away. So the Flyers are going to get tremendous field position on this one. Back deep for the Flyers, number 25, Kyle Otte, and number five, Nathan Busher, both very good return men, and they are standing at the 35-yard line. And the punter for Columbus Grove is on the back line, Darren, and if he steps backwards just a little bit, he could go, and he's catching the ball, gets it up, and a decent punt from where he was, fielded at the 35. He'll go to Busher will go across the 30, and he'll be taken out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. So a short field for the Flyers. Appeared to be pushed out of bounds by number six, Zach Reynolds. So with 8.25 to go here, the Flyers lead 20 to nothing, and they've got a short field from the 28-yard line. They punch it in here, and uh, partner, turn out the lights. <laughs> the party could yeah. be over. So 8.25 to go. Flyers up 20 nothing. Danny Hobart, Darren Gilbert from Spartan Stadium. This is Hess in the gun. No, no, they're going to go wildcat formation with number 25, Kyle Otte. And he'll keep it himself. And he's going to pick up about five yards, and he'll be taken down by a host of bulldogs. Until he run into Mr. Cook. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, uh, I wouldn't drive my car close to Mr. Cook. He is a big, bad linebacker. He has played a great game tonight. Hawker also coming up for the assistance there. 
They are just so nonchalant, Darren, about the way they handle their business. And you're right. You talk about discipline and uh, just the way they go about it is just fantastic to watch. Well, high school there's football. a difference between being confident and arrogant. Sure. They're not arrogant. They're not They're at very, all. They are very confident in their abilities and what they do, and they do it well. Oh, my goodness. I think that was a, a credit to his offensive. <laughs> yeah, number 36. And that's he Simon. Ran right in, yeah. He ran right into the back of his offensive he did. lineman. And, Boy, we're going to see that on the instant replay. Tonight's instant replay is made possible by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at HawkerDrywall.com to see how we can help you in a big, big stop. <laughs> You're right. He ran into the lineman there. I'm not sure who it was. I don't know if it was Rose <laughs> or not, but he went right up behind him, and he went nowhere. That'll bring up third and three from the 21-yard line, 7-10 to go. Hess is in the gun. He's going to keep it himself. Looks across the middle, middle of the field. Steps up. Throws to the corner of the end zone. He's got a man out there. Overshoots the outstretched arms of number 33, Connor Bruns, the 6'3", tight end. And that will bring up fourth down and about three for the 21-yard line. Nice coverage there by Zach Reynolds. 6.57 to go. They'll go for it here, it looks like. And that's exactly what they're going to do is they'll take the play in. Number five, Nathan Busher will bring the play in, deliver that to Tate Hess. Simon Partington is behind Hess, and he is flanked on the back side by Kyle Audie. They've got Busher on the right side. Hess is going to take the ball and roll to his right. He's going to option the ball. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to pick up a big first down. Another Dale Concrete first down. Call Dale's Concrete and decorative stamping and lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Appeared to be Schaefer on the stop along with Reynolds. Schaefer tried to run him down. He came a long way from the backside and just, just couldn't get him. Well, Darren Tate Hess has got those long strides, mm. and he really gets out, and he moves in the open field. This is Tess, excuse me, this is Hess in the gun, flanked off by number 36, Simon Partington. They'll give it to the second man through. He goes across the oh five yard line. He just, just pounded his ran way down over there. number six, and that Reynolds. was Zach Reynolds. My goodness, Zach Reynolds just got ran over. You know, late last year covering Marion Local in basketball, there was nobody playing any better for Marion Local than Tate Hess. Yeah, he was a nice he's, player. He's, he's a really good basketball player, and I know they've got high aspirations this winter with their basketball team, too. And They'll bring up second and two from the three-yard line, second and goal. And they are in the Knee Camp Farm Market red zone. So here's Hess under center. He's going to hand the ball off, number 28. He goes across, and he's going to so go into the end Sites. zone. Drew Seitz takes it in from the three-yard line, and he gives Marion Local the 26 to nothing lead with 5.44 to go. Drew Seitz, he was the man on that play, and he was the man on that drive, Darren. Yeah, he's very quiet. You know, you don't, you don't see a lot of... Right. Things that the kid does wrong, but he's very solid with his abilities and what he does on the field on both sides of the ball. Our scoreboard is provided by Home and Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, members of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. So here is the point after attempt. Snap is back, hold is good, the kick is up, and it is good. So with 5.44 to go until this one's called over, it's 27 0 Marion Local right here on WOSN. TV 44 and WSN are non-profit organizations sponsored by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate Here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. So 5.44 to go, and the Marion Local Flyers lead 27 to nothing. Danny Hamburg, Darren Gilbert from Spartan Stadium here on the campus of Lima Senior High School, a fantastic Division VI state semifinal game, and really a game that is at 27 to nothing seems like a pretty big spread, but Columbus Grove has played a great football game, and they have just been worn down by this machine called the Marion Local Flyers. Uh, you know, 
we, we talked a little bit before the game, Marion Local defeated Allen East last week 55 to nothing. And that was Columbus Grove's only loss this year as they lost in week five, seven to nothing. Allen East went on to win the Northwest Conference. So Columbus Grove has really battled tonight and they'll try to get on the board here with 544 to go. We've got Trent and Barraza back deep. And Barraza looks like he will get the ball at the 15 yard line. He goes across the 20 to the 25, and that's where he'll be taken down in a big time hit by number three, Carter Jones from Marion Local Flyers. So they'll take over first and 10 from the 25 yard line with 538 to play. TV44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported like viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation of any size. As always, say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. Here is Renner in the gun. First and 10 from the 25 yard line. Renner takes the snap. Throws off to the left side. He's got his man out there. He makes the connection. And they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. That's number six, Zach Reynolds. Five thirty-three to go. <clears throat> On the home and insurance scoreboard. Second and ten from the twenty-five. Marion Local leads twenty-seven to nothing. This is Renner in the gun. He's going to give the ball to Barraza as he goes off the right side. He gets tripped up for a gain of about three yards. Trenton Barraza goes across the almost to the 30-yard line where he was tripped up by the Marion local defensive line. That'll bring up third and seven from the 25-yard line. This is Renner in the gun, third and seven from the 28. He's flanked off to the left side by Trenton Barraza. He's got one receiver to the right and two to the left. Renner takes the snap. He rolls off, looks downfield, being chased by a host of Marion local defenders, and he is going to be taken down for a big loss, and he was slammed to the ground, and he hit really hard. And this is Landon Best is in the game now at quarterback, and I, I had said Brent Renner, but this is Landon Best. The 5'10 freshman is now in the game at quarterback for the Grove Bulldogs. So they have switched quarterbacks here, and they are going with best with 4.33 to go. So Landon Best, the 5'10", 140-pound freshman, now in the quarterback position for the Bulldogs. He is flanked off to the right by Trenton Barraza. This is best as he looks to throw down the field. He scrambles out of the pocket, throws to Barraza, and he makes the connection. Barraza catches the ball, goes across the 25, and that's where he'll be taken down for not much of a game. That'll bring up fourth and 12 from the 23-yard line, and Grove will have to punt the ball away. So the Marion local faithful can smell it now, Gilly, as with 4.04 to go, they lead 27 to nothing. Yeah, what a valiant effort by Columbus Grove tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I just said that they, 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 the score does not indicate how this game was played out. And now it looks like number seven, Justin Nauf, will come in. The six-foot sophomore will come in to quarterback the rest of this way. First man up through the hole, and he's taken down for not much of a gain. That'll bring up second and ten. Yeah, it appears Marion Local is went wholesale substitutions. Yeah, they've got a lot of backups in right now. Number 12, Owen Moeller just comes into the game. 5'10", 155-pound wide receiver. He brings the play into the game. Now is under center. They're going to pitch the ball back to number 45. This is Parker Hess as he's taken down. Not much of a gain at all. Parker Hess is a 5'10 sophomore, 165-pound running back. 
Clock continues to run at 310. And I think Marion Local is going to be content by just running the ball here, Darren, and keep that clock moving. Appeared to be Mitchell Ellerbrock coming up with a tackle. Ben Ranley in the game now. 5'8", 150 pound junior. Brings the play in from the sideline. Gives it to number seven, Justin Nalf, as he goes under center. Good night, Austin Niekamp, six foot seven, 200 pounds. <laughs> Sophomore. Sophomore. They'll go to the left side. He just keeps on churning out the yards. It picks up a nice gain of about five yards. That'll bring up fourth and six from the 26. And you got to believe they're going to go for it here just to keep the clock moving with 2.23 to go in the game. Do you think we'll see that six foot seven kid here in about? Uh, in a few months, uh, in a few weeks, weeks, the basketball season starts. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Three weeks. Fourth and six from the 21 yard line. We are now under two minutes. He'll hand the ball up off the middle, and he's going to be close. And, yeah, he's going to get it at Dale's Concrete first down. Trying to see who that was, but a great job great by job. that offensive line. Open up the holes to get him through there. And, Darren, I told you that seven of the last eight games by Marion Local have been shutouts. Call it eight out of nine, partner. They've allowed three points the last nine games. It's incredible. An unbelievable stat. Have you ever heard of anything like that in no. high school football? At the Division One, Two, no, Three, Four? Yeah, we've covered some good football oh, teams. I mean, who was it? It was giving up two points a game, or three <laughs> points a game. Glenville, yeah, and, right. And Van Wert takes them right to, right to the wire. But you know, absolutely. So here's a victory formation as they'll take a knee. And they are going to win this game, Darren, 27 to nothing. And part of listen, 27 to nothing sounds like a big spread. And we watched a great game effort by those Grove Bulldogs. Yep. Yeah, they they give everything they had tonight. They come in with a great game plan. I just think, you know, as the game wore on, you know, we saw a lot of tired. We did. Yeah. White jersey kids out there, but you cannot fault their effort. And, Congratulations to uh, Coach Schaefer, Schaefer and his staff and the community of Columbus Grove to get into this state semifinal game and to Coach Goodwin and Coach Sherrick and the staff and the players and the community, Maria Stein. Best of luck to them as they march on to play for another state championship. Yeah, they're going to play Kirtland for a state championship, which should be a fantastic game as both of those teams will come into this game undefeated. Marion Local moves to 15-0. Columbus Grove ends the year 12-3 and and a valiant effort by them. Darren, sum up what we saw tonight from the Marion Local Flyers. Consistency, do what you do best, do what got you here, stay within your game plan. Um, they know what they got to do to get the job done. They play with confidence, they play with poise. You know, there's a difference, you know, I, I said that earlier with being, having a little bit of swagger and they swag and they do it very well and and uh, they're gonna be a tough out next week. So that'll do it from Spartan Stadium here on the campus of Lima Senior High School. For Darren Gilbert, I'm Danny Holbrook. The Marion Local Flyers move on to the state title game with a 27-0 victory. We'll see you next week and God bless.